eggs. The blood was flowing. My head was pounding. The dang in the late 1970s, the TV network NBC decided to bring some of DC Comics' greatest superheroes to life in the two-part special Legends of the Superheroes. The casting process was a crucial step in ensuring the success of the show, and here's how each key actor was chosen for their role. For the role of Batman, Adam West was an obvious choice. Having already played the character in the 1960s Batman series, West brought a sense of familiarity and nostalgia to the role. His experience and popularity made him the perfect fit for the Caped Crusader. The producers wanted a fresh face for the role of Batman's sidekick, Robin. Burt Ward, who had played Robin in the 1960s series, was considered, but the producers ultimately chose actor Frank Gorshin, who had previously played the Riddler in the 1960s series. Gorshin's experience with the Batman universe and his proven acting chops made him an ideal choice for the role. For the role of the villainous Solomon Grundy, Actor Rod Hayes was chosen Ader Haas was known for his work in television and film, and his imposing physique and deep voice made him perfect for the role of the powerful and menacing Solomon Grundy. To play the role of the sinister Sinestro, actor Charlie Callis was selected. Callis was a well-known comedian and actor, and his experience and comedic timing made him the perfect choice to play the mischievous and unpredictable Sinestro. The role of the Green Lantern was given to actor Howard Murphy. Murphy was a relative newcomer to acting, but his charisma and good looks made him an ideal choice for the role of the powerful and heroic Green Lantern. These are just a few examples of the casting process for Legends of the Superheroes. The producers and casting directors worked hard to find the right actors for each role, taking into account their experience, talent, and chemistry with their co-stars. The result was a memorable and entertaining show that brought some of DC Comics' greatest superheroes to life. Okay. Chris Starley and Bill Carruthers, the directors of the 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes, aim to bring the classic DC Comics characters to life in a live-action format. They drew inspiration from the comics and the campy style of the 1960s Batman series. The directors employed a vibrant and playful visual style, using bold colors and over-the-top sets to create a fantastical world. Collaborating closely with the cast and crew, Darley and Carruthers encourage improvisation and physical comedy, which contributed to the series' lighthearted tone. They worked with production designers to create elaborate costumes that paid homage to the original comic book designs while adding a touch of humor. The directors also worked with the writers to ensure that the scripts were faithful to the characters' personalities and origins. Darley and Carruthers' approach to directing emphasized character-driven humor and action with a focus on the interplay between the superheroes and villains. They aim to create a fun and engaging series that would appeal to both children and adults. The director's vision for Legends of the Superheroes was to create a world where superheroes and villains could coexist in a campy and entertaining manner, providing a unique take on the classic comic book stories. Phoenix Avenue, he'd be Kentucky Fried. <laughs> In 1979, the TV series Legends of the Superheroes brought together some of DC Comics' most famous characters for a unique blend of comedy and action. This series featured heroes like Batman, Robin, and Wonder Woman, as well as villains like the Riddler and the Joker. One standout character in the series was the Green Lantern, who used his power ring to create solid light constructs and fight against evil. Do you have a favorite character or cherished memory associated with this TV series? Throughout the series, there were many funny, shocking, and even sad moments that made it a memorable experience for viewers. From hilarious one-liners to unexpected plot twists, Legends of the Superheroes had it all. As we delve deeper into this series, we'll uncover some fascinating facts about its production, the actors who brought the characters to life, and the impact it had on the world of superhero television. So, whether you're a longtime fan of the series, or just discovering it for the first time, We'd love to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Legends of the Superheroes. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. <laughs> oh boy, oh, boy. Oh, oh, well, well, well. Hey there, DC. The 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes was a unique production, with its set design and locations playing a significant role in bringing the comic book world to life. The series was primarily filmed in Hollywood 
with stages at Warner Brothers and 20th Century Fox serving as the main production locations. The set design for Legends of the Superheroes was a creative blend of traditional and futuristic elements. The production team aimed to create a visual contrast between the superheroes' world and the villain's lair. The superheroes' headquarters were designed with an art deco style, while the villain's lair was a high-tech, dystopian set. One of the logistical challenges faced during filming was coordinating the large cast of superheroes and villains. Each character had their own unique costume, which required additional time for dressing and makeup. To manage this, the production team created a detailed schedule to ensure that each character was ready for their scenes on time. Despite the challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques to enhance the viewing experience. One such technique was the use of chroma key technology, which allowed for the creation of dynamic special effects. This technology was relatively new at the time and required careful planning and execution. Another innovative aspect of the production was the use of a live audience. The series was filmed in front of a live studio audience, which added energy and excitement to the scenes. This approach was unusual for a superhero series, but helped to create a more engaging viewing experience. In summary, the production of Legends of the Superheroes was a complex process that required careful planning and innovative techniques. The set design, locations, and logistical challenges were managed effectively, resulting in a unique and entertaining superhero series. Only have $50. You see, I never carry more money than I can afford to lose. <laughs> $50. Legends of the Superheroes is a two-part TV special from 1979 that features a variety of DC Comics characters. The first episode, The Challenge, brings together heroes and villains for the first time in live action. This episode includes the return of Adam West, Burt Ward, and Frank Gorshin from the 1960s Batman series, as well as the live action debuts of heroes such as Huntress and Flash. The villains, including Riddler, Solomon Grundy, and Sinestro, provide plenty of entertainment as they showcase their powers. One of the standout performances comes from the actor playing Solomon Grundy, who shines in the roast episode. He playfully pummels Ed McMahon, making for a memorable moment. Frank Gorshin also delivers a noteworthy performance as a psychiatrist for Captain Marvel, showcasing multiple personality disorder in a captivating way. The roast episode features a different lineup, with the Weather Wizard and Dr. Silvana making strong impressions. The Weather Wizard's comedic timing is on point, even if some of the weather references might go over younger viewers' heads. Dr. Silvana, who runs a lemonade stand that takes away superpowers, once again steals the show. The Atom appears in the roast, while Batman and Robin's roles are reduced. However, they still provide some laughs, such as when Robin plays charades with Batman to explain a mishap with the Batmobile. The humor in both episodes is generally lighthearted and suitable for older children although it may feel a bit more adult compared to modern entertainment. The special also includes a musical number from DC's evil wizard Mordrew, who performs my favorite things that's what I call entertainment. Overall, Legends of the Superheroes is a fun and entertaining blast from the past, appealing to both DC Comics fans and those who enjoy so bad their good films. Everyday cruise, that beautiful brunette. <laughs> look, look I, I don't want to meet a brunette. The 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes featured a lively and energetic soundtrack that complemented the action-packed scenes and superhero themes. The music was composed by Oscar-winning composer Joe Harnell, who was known for his work on various TV shows and movies. Harnell's score for Legends of the Superheroes was a blend of orchestral and electronic elements which created a unique and dynamic sound. The composer used synthesizers to create futuristic and otherworldly sounds while the orchestra provided a rich and full sound that emphasized the heroic themes. The soundtrack featured several memorable themes, including the main title theme that played during the opening credits. The theme was a bold and brassy piece that set the tone for the series and introduced the viewer to the world of superheroes. Arnold also composed individual themes for each superhero, which played during their introduction scenes. These themes were tailored to each character's personality and powers and helped to establish their unique identities within the series. In addition to the score, the soundtrack also featured several popular songs from the 1970s, which were used to punctuate the action and add a touch of humor to the series. These songs were carefully selected to complement the narrative and emotional tone of each scene. The musicians involved in the creation of the soundtrack were highly skilled 
and experienced professionals who brought Harnell's compositions to life with their performances. The orchestra was conducted by Harnell himself, who ensured that every note was played with precision and emotion. Overall, the creation of the score and soundtrack for Legends of the Superheroes was a collaborative effort between Harnell, the musicians, and the show's producers. The music was carefully crafted to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the series and helped to establish the superheroes as larger-than-life characters. The soundtrack remains a memorable and iconic part of the series and continues to be enjoyed by fans today. Now, Francie is affectionately known as... Ruth Buzzy, known for her work in Sweet Charity, became a co-star on the popular show Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Gary Owens, who also appeared on Laugh-In, gained fame for his voice work in various cartoons and was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for radio in 1981. Owens' career included six years of weekly appearances on Laugh-In and voice work for various cartoon series. His contributions to radio earned him a place on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Honey, oh, how are you, sweetheart? Sit down now, sit down, straighten your beak. I have to go to him. Oh. The 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes featured two specials with a variety of iconic scenes. In the first special, The Challenge, one standout scene is the meeting of the superheroes in the Hall of Justice. The director, Bill Carruthers, used wide shots to showcase the grandeur of the hall while close-ups captured the expressions of the actors, heightening the anticipation for the adventure ahead. Adam West, reprising his role as Batman, commented on the importance of this scene, stating, It's a moment where the audience sees these beloved characters come together, each with their unique personalities, creating a sense of camaraderie that resonates with viewers. And the second special, The Roast, a memorable scene is the roast of the superheroes, where villains take turns mocking the heroes. The use of dim lighting and strategic framing emphasized the humorous tone, while the actor's comedic timing and delivery brought the witty dialogue to life. Actress Ruth Buzzy, who played Aunt Minerva, shared her experience, saying, The roast scene was a delight to film. It allowed us to showcase a different side of these characters, making them more relatable and entertaining for the audience. These iconic scenes have left a lasting impact on audiences, showcasing the versatility of the superhero genre and the enduring appeal of these classic characters. Of course, from your handwriting and your mask. I use my mask and my work. Gary Owens, known as the honorary sheriff of Encino, California, was a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. On the other hand, Frank Gorshin, who frequently contributed to Dean Martin's roasts, was famous for his impressions of Burt Lancaster and Richard Burton. Burt Ward, who played Robin in the 1966 Batman series, faced criticism from a Roman Catholic organization due to the fit of Robin's tights. Despite wearing one or even two supporters, the organization remained unsatisfied. Make the blonde. These cruises are dynamite. Ah, forget the crystal ball. This isn't getting... The 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes had a significant cultural and social impact, particularly in the realm of comic book adaptations for television. The series brought together a cast of iconic DC comic superheroes, including Batman, Robin, Flash, and Green Lantern, for a live-action variety show that combined comedy sketches with superhero action. While the series received mixed reviews from critics, it resonated with audiences, particularly children, who were captivated by the sight of their favorite superheroes brought to life. The show's campy humor and over-the-top costumes also contributed to its cult status among fans of kitsch and retro television. Legends of the Superheroes also had a significant impact on pop culture, particularly in the world of comic book adaptations. The series was one of the first live-action adaptations of DC Comics superheroes, paving the way for later shows like Batman and Superman. The series also helped to establish the trend of ensemble casts in superhero media, which would become a staple of later shows and movies like The Avengers and Justice League. Furthermore, Legends of the Superheroes contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The series featured a diverse cast of superheroes, including Black Vulcan, a black superhero with electrical powers, and Hawkman, a Native American superhero. The series also tackled issues like crime, corruption, and the importance of teamwork, which resonated with audiences during a time of social upheaval and change. Overall, Legends of the Superheroes may not be as well known or critically acclaimed as later superhero shows and movies, but it had a significant impact on pop culture 
and helped to establish the trend of live-action superhero adaptations. The series also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes and featured a diverse cast of superheroes, making it a notable milestone in the history of superhero media. Us, including our mortal enemies, the superheroes! Yeah. Ruth Buzzy, known for her role in Legends of the Superheroes, had a unique upbringing as her family ran a funeral parlor. They would lighten the mood by sharing jokes when not attending to mourners. Meanwhile, Adam West, who also starred in the series, was approached to play James Bond in on Her Majesty's Secret Service but declined, believing the role should go to a British actor. Best known for his role as Robin in Batman, Burt Ward's portrayal of Dick Grayson in Legends of the Superheroes was another notable appearance in his career. What? What evil genius! The 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes received mixed reviews from critics and audiences. It was a live-action adaptation of DC Comics superheroes, featuring characters like Batman, Robin, and Wonder Woman. The series was criticized for its low-budget special effects, campy humor, and uneven acting. However, it was also praised for its attempt to bring comic book heroes to life and its nostalgic value for fans of the genre. Notable reviews include a critique from the New York Times, which described the series as a curious and generally unsuccessful experiment in camp and a disappointment. The Los Angeles Times was more positive, calling it a pleasant surprise and a lot of fun. Audience reactions were also mixed. Some fans appreciated the novelty of seeing their favorite superheroes on screen, while others were disappointed by the lack of action and poor production values. The series did not receive any major award nominations or wins, which is not surprising given its reception. However, it has gained a cult following over the years and is still remembered by some as a fun and nostalgic piece of television history. The critical reception and lack of awards for Legends of the Superheroes may not have been what the creators and actors had hoped for, but it does not diminish the significance of their contribution to the world of superhero adaptations. The series paved the way for future live-action adaptations and helped to establish the superhero genre as a viable and popular form of entertainment. Freeways meet in Downey in the heart of downtown Silmar, the earthquake capital of the West Coast. Si habla espanol. What is this? Gabriel Dell, one of the Dead End Kids, was part of the Legends of the Superhero series. Another notable actor in the series was Frank Gorshin, who lived in Westport, CT, for many years. Gorshin's final acting role was on the show Grave Danger in 2005, where he played himself. Sadly, he passed away just two days before the episode aired. Kate Crusader, and this car here couldn't be safer. Let me show you what I mean. The Legends of the Superheroes TV series, produced in 1979, brought together a cast of veteran actors and talented newcomers for a live-action adaptation of DC Comics' classic superheroes. One anecdote from the set involves Adam West, known for playing Batman in the 1960s series, who reprised his role in this series. West, being a method actor, insisted on staying in character even during breaks, much to the amusement and slight confusion of his co-stars. Another story comes from the filming of the roast episode, where a variety of celebrities appeared as themselves to roast the superheroes. Comedian Ruth Buzzy, known for her work on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, was particularly excited to meet her childhood hero, Batman. Upon meeting West, she enthusiastically asked for a photo together, to which he graciously agreed, still in character as the Cape Crusader. The production also featured a number of up-and-coming special effects artists, who were given the challenge of bringing the superhero's powers to life. Although working with limited resources and technology compared to today's standards, they managed to create a number of visually interesting moments, such as the Flash's lightning-fast movements and Green Lantern's energy constructs. Despite the show's mixed reception and short lifespan, the cast and crew look back on the experience with fondness. Many have expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to be a part of a project that brought together so many talented individuals and paid tribute to the classic superheroes they grew up with. What a stroke of luck, Batman. A little too lucky if you ask me. Bert Ward, known for his role in Legends of the Superheroes, pursued higher education after high school and worked part-time for his father's real estate company. Frank Gorshin, another cast member, had more humble beginnings with a father who was a railroad worker and a mother who was a seamstress. 
Lastly, Ruth Buzzy, who also appeared in the series, created her famous character Gladys Ormsby while performing as Agnes Gooch in a production of Auntie Mame. These actors brought their unique backgrounds and experiences to their roles in the 1979 TV series. Does it all mean? I'll tell you what it means. It's diabolical. <laughs> it's shake. The 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes, while not widely regarded as a classic, did have some impact on the world of superhero media. As one of the earliest live-action adaptations of DC Comics superheroes, it paved the way for future filmmaking in the genre. The show, despite its campy nature and limited special effects by today's standards, featured a star-studded cast of iconic superheroes, including Batman, Robin, and Wonder Woman. The series, though not without its flaws, inspired subsequent works in the genre, particularly in the area of crossover events. The idea of bringing together multiple superheroes from different backgrounds to fight a common enemy was a concept that would be explored further in future productions, such as the successful Avengers franchise. Moreover, Legends of the Superheroes was notable for its attempt to bring a more lighthearted and humorous tone to the superhero genre, which was at the time dominated by darker and more serious storylines. This approach would later be embraced by shows like The Tick and The Flash, which incorporate humor and levity into their narratives. In short, while Legends of the Superheroes may not be remembered as a groundbreaking or critically acclaimed series, it did leave a lasting legacy and influence on the world of superhero media. Its innovative concepts and playful tone helped to shape the genre and inspire future filmmakers and storytellers. What? What evil genius? Adam West, known for his role as Batman, faced typecasting issues and played an out-of-work actor in Batman the Animated Series, who was once identified with a superhero character he portrayed in the past. Before this, he had lent his voice for Batman and Super Friends. Burt Ward, who acted as Robin, shares a connection to the entertainment industry through his ex-father-in-law, Mort Lindsay. Ed McMahon, hosting the 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes, received a posthumous induction into the Broadcasting Pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame in 2010. These individuals each have had unique experiences and contributions to the world of television and entertainment. Ruth Buzzy, known for her work in various films and TV shows, was part of the cast of Night Falls, a comedy horror movie directed by Eric T. Nicholasonator. The film also starred Audrey Landers, Brian Patrick Clark, Bill Irwin, Pamela Jean Bryant, and Gary Imhoff. The story revolves around a college grad student who falls for a succubus. Despite beginning production in Gainesville, Florida, in October 1987, there is no evidence the movie was ever released. Burt Ward is the third actor to portray the comic book character Robin Dick Grayson, known for his role in the Legends of the Superhero series. However, the series received criticism due to its extremely cheap production. Episodes were recorded on videotape instead of film, and both heroes and villains headquarters were the same set. Exterior shots were limited to a single park, and special effects were crude even for the time. Most hero and villain costumes were also of low quality. In his autobiography, Adam West expressed his regret for this project, specifically pointing out its production issues. <laughs> Gabriel Dell, known for his role in the 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes, was once mistakenly identified as the voice of Boba Fett in Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Although this was later corrected, it is believed that Dell may have provided the voice for Boba Fett in the animated segment of the Star Wars Holiday Special. Gary Owens, another actor in Legends of the Superheroes, was known for cupping his ear while working in radio, a gesture that became his trademark on Rowan and Martin's laugh-in. This happened by accident during a restroom break, when Owens noticed the acoustic properties of the tiled walls. Ruth Buzzy, who also appeared in Legends of the Superheroes, holds a notable record for appearing in every episode of Rowan and Martin's laugh-in, including the special in 1967. She was one of only three people, and the only woman, to achieve this feat, sharing this distinction with Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, Grandy. Holy overmatch, Batman! No one can handle Solomon! If the 1979 TV series Legends of the Superheroes holds a special place in your heart, we'd love to hear about it. 
Share your memories and experiences related to this classic series. How did it impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? Your engagement is essential to us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's spark some great conversations about this beloved piece of television history. We're eager to learn how Legends of the Superheroes has left its mark on you. Whether you were a child when it first aired or discovered it later, your story matters. Help us create a rich tapestry of memories and insights about this iconic series. Join us as we celebrate the enduring appeal of Legends of the Superheroes and the joy it has brought to so many. Let's dive into the world of this classic show together and appreciate its significance in the realm of television. Your voice is important to us, so please share your thoughts and feelings about this beloved series. And you, Solomon Grundy.